Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Sine of x over cosine of x is equal to tangent of x for all real numbers x in the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2. Now here, context is going to be important. First of all, let's remind ourselves of the definitions we've been using. Our definition of the exponential function is as follows. For each complex number z, e to the z is the limit of the sequence 1 plus z over n to the power of n. And from here, we've proven a lot of properties of the exponential function. For example, we have proven e to the z times e to the w is equal to e to the z plus w for all complex numbers z and w. We also know that e to the 0 is equal to 1 because if we take z to be 0, then this sequence is a constant sequence of 1s, which converges to 1. We also know that e to the z is not equal to 0 for all complex numbers z. Now, using the exponential function, we defined sine and cosine as follows. For each complex number z, we define cosine of z to be e to the iz plus e to the negative iz over 2. And we define sine of z to be e to the iz minus e to the negative iz over 2i. And we also defined another function whose name we gave arctangent. And we defined it as follows. Let x be any real number and consider the following sequence. Then the sequence 2 to the n xn converges. And we defined the value that this sequence converges to to be the arctangent of x. So these are all definitions. And from this definition of arctangent, we proved a lot of properties of arctangent. For example, we proved that the arctangent function is bounded. And we defined the least upper bound of the arctangent function to be pi over 2. In other words, we defined pi to be 2 times the least upper bound of the arctangent function. And in regards to pi, we proved that the arctangent function is a function from the real numbers to the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2. In fact, we proved that the arctangent function maps onto the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2. Another property of the arctangent function that we proved is that the arctangent function is strictly increasing. And that tells us that the arctangent function is 1 to 1. And because arctangent is both 1 to 1 and onto, that told us that arctangent has an inverse function. And we defined tangent to be the inverse of arctangent. So since this is the inverse of the arctangent function, this means these guys get swapped. So tangent is a function from the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2 to the real numbers. Right, so this is our definition of tangent. Next, a property that we proved which involves the exponential function and the arctangent function is the following. We proved that e to the 2i arctangent x is equal to 1 plus ix over 1 minus ix for all real numbers x. Now in regards to our definitions of cosine and sine, we have proven that the cosine of any real number is a real number, the sine of any real number is a real number, and in regards to cosine, we proved the following fact. We have proven that cosine of x is greater than 0 for all x in the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2. And actually, with this information, we can make sense out of this proposition. Because if we consider any real number x in the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2, well then x belongs to the domain of the tangent function. So we can make sense out of tangent of x. Since we can take the sine of any complex number, we can make sense out of the sine of x. Since we can take the cosine of any complex number, we can make sense out of the cosine of x. In fact, we're able to divide by cosine of x in this case. The reason why is because since x belongs to the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2, we have that cosine of x is greater than 0. So we can divide by cosine x. So yeah, we can make sense out of this proposition. So now let's try to prove it. Now to prove it, 
we are going to be using the following results in our proof. We're going to be using these facts in our proof. So we're going to move back to the top and I'm going to write these facts down. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. To start with the proof, let's give ourselves an arbitrary real number x in the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2. From here, the whole goal is to show that sine x over cosine x is equal to tangent x. Now since x is an element of the open interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, this means that x is an element of the domain of the tangent function so we can make sense out of the tangent of x. And I'm going to let a be equal to the tangent of x. Now since tangent is the inverse of our tangent, this means that x is equal to the arctangent of a. So now we're gonna show that sine of x over cosine of x is equal to tangent of x. Now, by definition of sine, sine of x is equal to e to the ix minus e to the negative ix over 2i, and by definition of cosine, cosine of x is equal to e to the ix plus e to the negative ix over 2. Now notice the 2s cancel out, and so we're left with this. Now, we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by e to the ix. Right? We can do that since e to the ix is non-zero. Now if we distribute e to the ix in the numerator, what do we get? We're going to get e to the ix times e to the ix, which is equal to e to the 2ix. And then we have minus e to the negative ix times e to the ix, which is equal to e to the 0, which is equal to 1. Similarly, in the denominator, we're going to get e to the 2ix plus 1. So we have this. But then, we're going to replace the x's with arctangent of a. So we get this. But then, by this result, we know that e to the 2i arctangent a is equal to 1 plus ia over 1 minus ia. So we have this, but now we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 1 minus ia. If we do that, then if we distribute 1 minus ia in the numerator, we're going to get 1 plus ia minus 1 minus ia. And in the denominator, we're going to get 1 plus ia plus 1 minus ia. And now, in the numerator, we see that the 1s are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with ia minus negative ia, which is equal to 2ia. And in the denominator, we see that the ias are going to cancel out. And we're going to be left with 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. And now we see that the 2s cancel out, the i's cancel out, and so we're just left with a. But a is equal to the tangent of x, so this is equal to tangent of x. And so we have shown that sine of x over cosine of x is equal to the tangent of x. So this completes the proof. So we have proven, according to our definitions, that sine of x over cosine of x is equal to tangent of x for all real numbers x in the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2. So our definition of tangent was that it's the inverse of the arctangent function. But now we can actually extend the definition of tangent as follows. We define tangent of z to be sine of z over cosine of z for each complex number z where cosine of z is not equal to zero. So the domain of our original tangent function was the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2. The domain of our new tangent function is the set of all complex numbers z 
such that the cosine of z is non-zero. And clearly, the domain of our original tangent function is a subset of the domain of our new tangent function. Because if we consider any real number x in the open interval negative pi root 2 comma pi root 2, then we know that the cosine of x is greater than 0. And therefore, the cosine of x is not equal to 0, so x belongs to the domain of our new tangent function. So essentially, our new tangent function is an extension of our old tangent function. Right? It has to be an extension, because if we consider any real number x in the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2, well then the tangent of x according to our old definition is equal to the tangent of x according to our new definition. That's precisely what this result tells us. Right, so this is essentially what we can do. We can extend the definition of tangent so that we can take the tangent of other things rather than just elements of the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2. Now you might be wondering exactly which complex numbers will satisfy this property. Well, it turns out we have the following proposition. Cosine of z is equal to zero exactly when z is equal to n pi over two for some odd integer n. Now clearly the converse is true, right? We can all imagine the cosine of n pi over two is equal to zero when n is an odd integer. But how do we know that the forward is true? How do we know if cosine of z is equal to zero how does that imply that z must be of this form, right? But in any case, this is true. And so cosine of z is not equal to zero exactly when this is false. So you can imagine what the domain of this new function is. And yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about for this video. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.